Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started today. We'd like to welcome you to the Disability Benefits um, webinar for our employer group. Um, today we'll talk through the application process and employer responsibilities. Um, joining me today is Carlisa Holman. She is in our employer outreach group. Uh, we also have Katie Talbert who will be answering questions as well as Sharon Amos who is in our disability benefits group. So um, the way that things will work is you should see the panel on the right hand side of your screen. That panel is how you will ask questions. Um, all you need to do is type your question in that panel and um, we will respond to you. If we receive enough of the same question, we may very well um, answer your question verbally. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and move on. So Carlisa, take it away. Hi everyone, um, it's Carlisa Holman. And we know that this is a topic that our employers love to go over, not that you have disabilities every day, but it is a process you might not be as familiar with. As we um, get going, I wanted to let you know someone had sent me an email about some materials. Don't feel rushed to write down every single note because it will be available for you on our employer website. I'm going to give a plug for that for those of you who haven't been on that. Lots of resources, but this um, webinar will be recorded, be available for you. But we're also going to have some samples of the forms that employers will see during this process. So if you've never seen one, there will be samples out there for you to see. And there's also a disability tip sheet that's going to wrap up some suggestions that we give for employers on the process for this. But today we're going to go over everything. Um, I don't know. Some of you might even know, I didn't know you had a disability plan or who would know we actually have two disability plans. We're going to go over eligibility, just the process from A to Z on how everything works for the member and for you as the employer. And at the end of this, we'll wrap up with your employer responsibilities. So we're just going to go through the gamut today for you. All right, so we do have two disability plans. They're oddly enough named the old and the new plan. Our old disability plan will cover all of our members who had a first date of service on July 20, July 29, 1992, or who did not elect into the new plan. They did have an opportunity when this change came about with our new plan to elect into the new plan. So our old disability is for all members with first date of service before July 29, 92, and who did not like the new plan. There are some differences on how these plans work. So on the old disability plan, our member has to file and be off payroll, must file their application and be off the payroll before reaching age 60. That's a big one. So age is important here. It has to happen before age 60. Um, however, this member who is approved for disability will receive their disability to benefit to death as long as they're still considered disabled. So that will continue on for them. The benefit range is between 30 and 75% of the final average salary in this calculation. And currently we have 3,780 members who qualify to apply for disability under the old disability plan. And on All right, I just, um, I, I'm hearing from people again that they're still having a difficult time hearing and understanding you. Um, no. Uh, I don't know if you want to try to call in potentially. No, let me do my headset. Okay. I call in real quick. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm getting mixed feedback. I'm hearing some people are saying it's fine and some people saying that they're still not understanding. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. And what phone number will I see to call in at, Nikki? I'm sorry. Let's see about that. Um, okay. On the second hand, or I'm sorry, on the second, on the side, when you click audio on oh, your I panel, Got you it. hit phone call, and then you'll have the number there. Okay. So while she's getting... Um, ready to call back in. I know that um, she shared a little bit about um, what we'll send, but we will be sending a follow-up email. I'm not sure if we'll be doing it um, immediately or if it'll be a little after. Let's see here. Um, yes, 
we're going to send the follow-up uh, immediately after. So um, you'll have all of those resources available to you. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have called in with my phone headset, so I really hope that this has a longer mic to it, that everyone can hear me. It's my worst fear. I haven't done a webinar for a while and I have technical difficulties. Much better. So I'm just going to re- <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, everybody All says right. they can hear you much better. So I, we're good All to right. go. Thanks, everyone. Now it's going to be too loud. Um, but we discussed the old disability plan. I know you've been staring at it, so we'll go ahead and move to the new disability plan. So on the new plan, that will be for everyone who is a member with a date of service on or after or who selected the new plan on July 29th, 1992. What's good about this plan is that we're all, you know, as we know, working a little longer, living a little longer. The member can apply at any age if they're on the new disability plan. However, the benefit does end after a specified, specified number of months, even if the member remains disabled. On this case, at the end of that period, our member is able to do what we do, a conversion to a retirement benefit. So that one is not for life, it is a specified number. Um, the benefit ranges for this disability benefit is 45 to 60% of the final average salary. And currently we have 61,577 members who qualify for the new disability plan. So the big difference with those is the age that you can apply at and the duration that you remain on it, but they are two different plans. All right, so we're going to talk about eligibility. Our member or your employee, in order to apply for disability, has to have at least five years of service credit. So if you have a newer employee that's only been here a few months or a couple years, unfortunately, they would not be eligible to apply for a disability plan. Um, they're going to fall under the old or the new disability plan. Now, some employers ask me when we're out training, oh my gosh, how do I know what my employee has, which one? You don't have to track that as the employer. That's something SCRS tracks. So that part of it, you can just wipe your brow and say, good, you, you figure out which one they're on. However, the member, in order to be eligible to apply, does have to have contributed to SCRS within the last two years. That deadline is really important because there is a, it's a true break. Um, I was out training many years ago and a member had a letter from our wonderful disability department that unfortunately they had missed the two-year deadline and was not able to apply for disability. So that is a big deadline um, that our members and your employees need to know about. Um, in order to apply, they also cannot be receiving a service or a disability benefit from one of the other state pension plans. Lastly, but not least, they cannot have withdrawn their contributions. So unfortunately, if they took a refund of their account, they would not be able to apply for the disability program at CERS. So qualifications for disability, um, what's going to happen is that a SERS appointed physician must find the applicant to be either mentally or physically incapacitated from performing their last assigned duties for at least 12 months. And the reason that is, is it takes three to five months to process a disability. So this is not a short-term disability program per se, and that's why they uh, hold that 12 months um, in order to help the guidelines fall, follow them. Um, the disability must have occurred since the applicant last became a member or before the applicant stopped contributing. We kind of touched on that a little bit ago. Um, last but not least, on the qualification or disability, our board will agree with the physician's um, findings, so they will approve it in the end as one of the qualifications for disability. Now, how the disability disability benefit process starts is with the application. I have had employers call in and say, hey, you know, I can't find the application on our website. Um, the retirement application is out there. However, the disability benefit is, application is not out there. Uh, the disability benefit is quite the process, and there's a lot of technicality to it. And we have the most amazing disability team. So how this is going to start is the member is going to call in and speak to one of our disability representatives, and they will mail the application out to them. So you will not be able to find that out on our forms. 
Um, we do encourage members to apply before they exhaust all their sick leave. It is a process of three to five months, so they don't need to wait, nor should they wait. See, this is a live webinar. Um, forgot to turn my volume off. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Um, they don't need to run through all of their sick leave and then apply. So once you are talking to your employee and someone's talking about the disability process, um, they want to go ahead and take advantage and get that ball rolling. Um, once they send in the application, um, the member's um, physician will send in a report that basically tells us why they think that their um, member is disabled. Um, when that happens, what's going to happen is the disability application is processed and where the employer comes in is that your treasurer, this is actually mailed to you, this will not show up electronically, you will get a paper, your district, your treasurer will get a paper um, letter stating that Carlisa Holman has applied for disability and we're including a job duty form for you to complete because you need to let SIRS know um, the job description that I had at the school for this process. Um, and then also what's going to happen is that SERS appoints an examining physician that schedules the medical exam for that member in this process. And then that examiner will give us a report letting us know if their opinion is that they are disabled or not. And in the decision process, once again, we just want to really hammer home that this can take anywhere to three to five months. It's not a super quick process by any means. Um, so it does take that long. We have our medical advisory committee that will review all the information, all the medical files, and give their recommendation to the board. Uh, then our board will review and make the final decision on approving or denying a disability. And then the notice of the decision is sent to the member. Now the effective date, there's a lot of questions on this. So how the effective date works with a disability is it's going to be the first of the following month of the latter of. Just like in all of our other type of service retirements, it's the last day of paid service. So whether I showed up and worked that day or I took a paid sick day, um, it would be the first of the following month. A wage certification on a disability will go out to you in ESERS, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later, but you will get that nudge to complete that. Um, or the first of the month following the month that disability received the application. So when we received the application, whichever was the, the later, the last paid day, or the application was received for, for SERS. Um, an approval for disability may come with a contingent on the member agreeing to do medical treatment or vocational rehabilitation. Um, those will, again, nothing that you will be involved in, but it's something that the member will know from us that they are, the, if I could talk today, it might help all of us, uh, that they will need to do medical treatments. Uh, this treatment is going to be beneficial to the recovery of their condition, uh, rehabilitation, the test, the evaluation, uh, as training for the purposes of enabling the recipient to find employment and other occupation as well. So once the member is approved on disability, they are actually placed on a leave of absence. And that leave of absence is going to be anywhere from three to five years. All disability recipients are at least three years. Um, the leave of absence can be extended to five years if the participating member is doing medical or vocational rehabilitation. Now, I just want to make a side note here because I know I'm going to forget it. Um, they are put on a leave of absence. What we don't want is that the employee has should not be resigning from the school. They're not resigning. They're on a disability program from SERS and the school district will put them on a leave of absence. If the disability is terminated during the leave of absence, the employer is obligated to restore the employee to the previous position or salary. We like to encourage the member or encourage the school, but ultimately it's the school's decision on their policy. But once they are approved for disability, that the school could allow them to continue using their sick leave if they still have a bank of sick leave, unpaid sick leave that they could take advantage of using. Uh, we encourage that. It also helps the member to receive their full pay and continue their health care benefits as well. 
We do have annual medical reviews here at SERS. Um, so what we're going to do is, again, you won't be involved in this, but they will um, have an annual review. At this time, uh, they are considered the standard of continuing disability eligibility. I apologize. i got to put the bifocals back on. Um, while on leave of absence, the standard is whether the member is longer disabled from the SERS cover position. Um, when the leave of absence ends, the standard is whether the member is capable of performing a job with equal to or greater than 75% of the final average salary adjusted for inflation for which he or she is qualified, and that can reasonably be found in the member's regional job market. Termination of disability can happen when one of these occurs. Either a subsequent medical re-examination finds that the member meets the applicable standard to terminate, the member returns to a SERS covered position, a member's death, or a member requests that the benefit ends. SERS will send a notice of decision to terminate the member if the leave of absence has not expired, SERS notifies the employer that the member is no longer disabled from the last SERS position. So the employer must restore the member to the previous position and salary or to a position and salary that's similar, similar, no later than five days of the first of the month following the terminated disability benefit. So let's talk about the appeal process. Um, we do have an appeal process if a benefit is denied or terminated. The member may appeal a decision to have their benefits denied or terminated. The member must submit the notice of his or her intent to appeal within 15 days of the denial or termination letter. We actually have samples of those letters out on the website that I talked about earlier, so you can always take a look at those if you're interested in a sample. So I know that was a lot of information and a lot of sometimes reading from the bullet point, which normally isn't my style. However, there are some very specifics to disability, so I wanted to make sure that I said those correctly. But from the employer's aspect, um, what your responsibility is going to be when the district receives the letter with a job duty form is to complete that and apply the detailed job description for us. When the disability is approved and the district gets that approval letter, um, what's going to happen is you're going to get that electronic wage certification out in ESERS. That will need to be completed. Um, now, if you are still paying or going to allow them to use paid sick time, just like any other wage certification, you can do one of two things. You can let it sit there um, and complete it. And it also has room, and we'll talk about it in a moment, that any unreported uh, earnings that's going to be coming in, you would add that to the certification. But the wage certification from the employer will need to be completed. Um, you'll let SERS know if you actually hire or are going to employ someone who is receiving a disability benefit. That includes a member whose benefit has not yet terminated and restore the employee to the formal position if, the, if SERS, we, terminate disability while the member is still on their leave of absence. So anywhere from that three to five years, depending on um, what that member is continuing on medical or vac vocational or rehabilitation, rehab. I can't even say that word, I apologize. The three to five years, they will have to come back to work. Uh, just to reiterate on the wage certification, you're going to enter that unreported earnings in the pay period certification detail of the wage certification. For those of you who, who do wage certifications, that's that middle panel that allows you to put any unreported money that has not come in yet. We really want you to compare what you've reported um, on the number of days, especially for those members, employees that have not worked a full 120 days, because that's going to be very important in service credit. Um, so we want you to double check that. If there's a discrepancy or a question, just like with anything else, you'll be hearing from someone, in this case, from our disability department, wanting to clarify any earnings or possible uh, days being reported if they have a question.
we ask that you make any adjustments prior to processing your or submitting your waste certification. So if you know um, that you have what we call an adjustment in ESERS, you either have to remove money, add money, especially days, um, go ahead and give employer services a call. We'll help you do that adjustment. That way it's in the member's account correctly and then submit your wage certification. Just makes the process go a little smoother. On the wage certification, there's also a note section. So you are able to add a note. So when our disability department is processing, uh, they can also read any clarification that you might want to add to that. Um, if you have any questions when you process that though, please feel free to give us a call. We'll help walk you through that. Nikki, do we have any questions that we needed to share with the group? Do not. We have not. Oh, the only thing that we've actually had was someone asked if we would be forwarding um, this presentation. So I don't know if you want, I, you know, I think that at the beginning there was some issues with sound. Um, so people might not yeah. have heard um, you, what you explained at the beginning. So if you want to hit that again, that would probably be a, a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this webinar is going to be recorded and we'll definitely be able to give you, you're going to be getting a follow-up email with a certification of completion as well. Um, and then we can include, so Nikki, to the follow-up email, can we include the link to the slideshow since I had some audible issues? We certainly will. Um, and then I know that we have some, some tips about disability that will be sharing as well and I don't know if Sharon wants to go over some of those tips right now or you know how you want to handle that um, basically we covered it all in the um, presentation um, so the tips are just a reminder of the key points in the presentation okay perfect I think so they're good Okay, so we will make sure that we send that in the follow-up email as well. That's great, and I really appreciate you guys being patient. Sorry about the um, headset issue and letting me um, jump back in here and talk about this. And like I said, you don't always do disability. Um, if you have any questions, the letters do come to you in paper form, not electronic. The wage certification will be electronic. It will say uh, disability. Um, so you will give us a call if you have any questions submitting that. Yeah, well, and we did just receive a few questions. So the first question Yay. is, does Sir send a note every year when a person is on disability? I'm not sure. No, we do not. Okay. Okay. Only when we're terminating within the leave of absence period. Okay. Um, and then another question is, we have an employee who's currently on disability from SERS. Their five years are set to expire sometime in 2021. Will SERS reach out to the employee or is this something we as a district need to do? Uh, we would reach out to them if they're um, converting from the disability, if, if that answers the question. Yeah, I don't know if potentially they're talking about the um, years of service, or I'm sorry, the, the leave of absence that, you know, we don't mm -hmm. notify people that they're moving out of the leave of absence time frame. I'm not sure if that's what they were asking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's no notification on that. Okay. Um, we have employees that apply for disability. Um, let me see here. How long do they have to apply after their last day of service? They have to apply within two years of their last date of service. And then is there ever a situation where someone on disability is able to work part-time in a different position? Yes, they are allowed to work as long as they're not working for a school system 
in any capacity and as long as they're not doing a job that's similar to the job that they held at the school. So we have lots of people that supplement the disability by working part-time in the public sector. Okay. Um, this one is kind of a long question, so bear with me. Um, we have employees that apply for disability and the wage information is put on the SERS website, but they keep working, not using sick time. An example is they had an employee who filed in 2018 and just went out in December of 2020. How do we mm -hmm. handle that and how does SERS handle that? Hmm. Well, I mean, we, we can't force someone to stop working, um, even though, you know, they have been approved. So, in a sense, like in this particular case, we've held on to that case um, until the person actually stopped working. So it, it doesn't happen very often. That's a very unusual situation. Um, but every now and then someone does continue. And we certainly do reach out to them to find out, you know, do you plan on going on disability? What, what are your um, plans? Um, and sometimes it's financial reasons that they continue working. Gotcha. So someone may very well, you know, apply and keep working. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, once they receive notif notification of their approval, could they potentially mm -hmm. then start using their sick leave after that with their employer? I mean, is that something that typically happens? Most, most of the time that is what happens. If they gotcha. have sick leave, they would use it. But sometimes, they don't have sick leave or not very much, so they continue working for a period. And like I said, it's very unusual that someone from 2018 would continue working, but I know we, we do have that particular situation. Okay. Um, so the, the question that just came in is, how will the district know if we need to bring back an employee or if they are going on going on to retirement? We would send a letter um, letting the district know. The member, we don't just stop somebody the month after we tell them they're being terminated. Um, it's, they have 90 days before we actually stop the benefit. So that gives the member and the district, if the member's returning, time to get everything together to allow that person to return. So we would notify via letter. Okay. Um, the next question is, are medical benefits offered to employees on disability? Yes. Yeah, and I think we cover that when we, we you know, when, when they send, when they're approved, we actually send a healthcare guide and that kind of information to those members, correct? Yes, and actually they get the healthcare guide even when they first apply, just so they can see what the options are. Okay, um, well that wraps up all the questions received, unless anyone has anything else they'd like to ask. Going once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we're good. It. Yeah. Um, Carlisa, do you want to just go ahead and wrap up? Yep. I just want to again thanks everyone for letting me get my feet wet. I do live presentations a whole lot smoother than um, recorded webinars. But once again, um, our website, employer website, we love it that when you call us and you email us, that's what we're here for. But there's a wealth of knowledge you might not even know. There's a video center out there. There's um, recorded and on-demand uh, videos from anywhere from membership to disability to how to process 
certifications. There's a whole lot of mini tutorials on ESERS. Um, so I wanted to remind you that there's a lot of uh, resources to your fingertips on our website as well. Okay, well, I, oh, here we go. Um, Carlisa, you got a, um, a comment that everyone misses seeing you in person, but appreciates the information, so. I know, next time we're going to Zoom call. It's hard for me to talk and not see people. <laughs> we'll <Just> get kidding. there. <laughs> okay. I miss everyone, too. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a nice afternoon.